In 2017, an app launched with over 100,000 downloads in its first week. Investors were thrilled. There was so much buzz around it, with influencers and celebrities hyping it up on social media. Thousands ran to buy tickets driven by FOMO and the promise of an exclusive luxury music festival experience. But when attendees arrived at the tropical island, they found chaos instead of paradise. No luxury villas, no high-value meals, just disaster relief tents and sad cheese sandwiches. The event had collapsed horribly, leaving a wake of angry ticket holders, lawsuits and shattered dreams. This is just one example of how easily we can be seduced by numbers and hype. An example of how the current world is so obsessed with instant success and numbers and how we are so hyper-fixated on launch numbers across different industries, and how this has distorted our perception of value and impact. But how did we get here? I want you to picture this. There's a passionate painter in the late 1800s. He's pouring his heart and soul onto his canvas upon canvas, and he is working diligently. His style is very unique, and he's not willing to compromise it for anything. But in his lifetime, he manages to sell just one painting. One. In today's metrics, we will not even be talking about him. We will be labeling him as a failure right away. But fast forward a century, those same paintings that I'm talking about, they are now selling for tens of millions of dollars. A single one of them, you will have to get it for about $82.5 million at auction. And the artist's name is talked about everywhere worldwide, from galleries to museums. This is the story of Vincent van Gogh, and during his lifetime, he sold just one painting. Today, we will call that a flop, but now his art is selling for millions. There are so many examples of this as well. Let's talk about music. So we've had artists like the Velvet Underground who didn't top the charts when they started. They sold their first album poorly, but over time, they influenced other musicians and now considered legends. Let's even talk about books. And I'm sure you've read this book before, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. It wasn't an instant hit. It wasn't at all. It took years to gain popularity, but now it's a classic and it's never out of print. But fast forward to today. Shift from us valuing long-term impact to us obsessing over immediate numbers didn't happen overnight. I'll say it was a gradual change and tech played a major part in that. Let me explain. So in the 1950s, we had the introduction of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. This was the first time ever there was a comprehensive data-driven ranking of music popularity. It was widely available, but I think the real turning point came in the 1990s. Because in 1991, Billboard, they came up with something, point-of-sale data from SoundScan. So what they did was they incorporated a system that would provide accurate, real-time sales figures that anybody can see. And based on what they are seeing, they can make a prediction of what, how much sales somebody is going to make first week or how much sales somebody is making a day. And all of that changed everything. So the book industry also saw what was happening and they're like, okay, let's follow them. So in 2001, when the New York Times bestsellers list began using book data scan, they also were determining the position of somebody on their list by how much hard sales numbers they have. It wasn't the best writer. It was the best seller. You had to sell to rank in there. We also have the rise of the internet in the 1990s and the 2000s. And also, this helped us to see what was happening. You could see every click. You could see every like. You could see every play. You could see everything happening. You could see how much sales somebody makes, how many people are following them. Everything is visible for us to see. And I believe this is the reason why we started becoming obsessed with numbers. Because suddenly... An artist's world could be measured with their followers, their likes, their shares, their downloads and everything. And also somebody like a real person who's not even an artist, you're just a real person, an everyday person. You started measuring yourself with your sales, with not with your sales, with your likes and everything. And you know, who's following you, who's not following you. And I believe that's when we started becoming obsessed with numbers.
It was all about followers. It's all about likes. It's all about how many sales are you on the bestseller list? How many subscribers do you have? And that has done a real number on different industries. Let's talk about it. In the world of hip-hop, there's an unspoken rule. Keep it real. But in today's music industry and the way things are going, it seems like keeping it real has taken a backseat with keep the numbers up. Let's take this year for example. Over five female rappers have launched a project, be it an album or a mixtape or anything. And whenever I see the conversation around this, it's hardly on the product itself. It's almost always on who sold more, how much did they sell, who's outselling the other person they consider as competition, who's using sales numbers to sub their competition. There's a lot going on. It's like there's so much ranking on. If you go on Twitter right now, I promise you, you will see so many rankings on this person's first week sales, the other person's first, first week sales. So this is who's bottom on the list, who's number one, who's on top. And this is the problem. We are turning something that's meant to be so beautiful into a race. Who can get the most streams the fastest? Like who can manipulate the system so that you can get all these streams we have to understand that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. There's some songs that will grow over time in an album. There's some songs that will take a while. Every time I listen to an album, I'll be like, oh, this is my favorite song. I'll go on for like a week or two and I'll be like, no, I don't like that song. I like this other one. So I feel like we should give people grace rather than, you know, measuring everything on numbers. And for an industry that was complaining just last year that it was fading, should numbers really be the focus? Shouldn't we applaud people for just putting out projects out there trying to revive the same industry that they are in? Or should we just focus on these numbers and get them to be discouraged to put out anything? I'll let you answer that in the comments while I talk about books. In 2020, another hit the shelves and it sold over 48,000 copies in its first week and zoomed in on the New York Times bestseller. You know, people buy books and it takes them a time before they could read it. But because they saw other people were buying it, they went to buy it as well. So it was a success. But soon after, when everybody got their books, they started looking into it and they were like, no, actually, this book is misrepresenting like a certain culture. But the big number sales hit that problem because everybody could see the numbers and you were like, let me just go and buy. You didn't even know what it was about. You were going to go and buy because of that. So this shows you how tricky it is to judge a book by its, you know, first week sales, pun intended. But, you know, it's like when you have numbers, you can sell anything. People that are not even interested in that they will run and get on that. Don't even get me started on the online business wall. And what I mean by that is people who sell on Instagram, small business owners or on TikTok. I work in launching. So I help small business owners and I help creators and, you know, entrepreneurs launch products and services. And most of the time when people come to me and I ask them, okay, what's your launch goal? They say these big numbers that are not based on anything is this based on previous data no is this based on anything and it's not everybody it's just a few that i've asked where did you get these numbers from they're like oh i saw this person make so much sales and they were talking about that so i want to make those numbers so is this something that you really want or is it because you see the numbers and you feel like that will make you look really really good i don't know it seems like we have a big problem with numbers maybe I played a part into it as well so I wrote a book on an ebook on launching and one of the launch content that I recommended people post I call it like your numbers content this is when you post how many people are in so that other people can can get in but there are different ways to post social proof so I'll acknowledge that I might be part of the problem that's why I said our obsession and not you know the obsession because I feel like this is a conversation that we should have. What makes something successful is should we ask other questions like does this product or does this art stick around? Are people still using it or are they talking about it months or years later? What type of impact does it have? Does it change how people think or feel 
Is it high quality? Does it do what it's supposed to do and do it well? Does it keep growing and improving over time? I think those are some of the things that we should be looking at because we seem to have this deep obsession with numbers. And maybe we're using that to mask deeper issues. I don't know. Let's talk about it in the in the comments. I want us to have a conversation around this. I'll see you in the comments.